Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast pregame episode. Of course, I'm Ray. I'm here with Matt. We're sitting here. We're 100% live once again here on Facebook Live. And uh, of course, we're right around the corner what from happened? Christmas. We're right around the corner from Christmas time. So, you know, it, what, what exactly do you have any like fond Christmas memories that you have as a child from Christmas itself? Mm. Fond memories of, of gifts or just memories in, in general? Just just memories in general. Uh, I mean, there's so much like like Christmas memories, but <laughs> I, I think one of my favorites that vividly I can remember yeah. is uh, when I got the Stretch Armstrong for Christmas. Oh, I guess I remember Stretch Armstrong. Uh, I got that and uh, whatever the bad guy was, but you had to like pump him up with the shit. Oh, you had to pump him? You had yeah, to pump him that? full of stuff? Dude, yeah. I, I fucking, <laughs> I had that and I was just pump, <clears throat> pump away and we're like, yeah. yeah. Get him hard. Yeah, just yeah. Nice yeah get him and, nice and plump. Nice and, nice and plump solid. so you can just spread him apart. Right. Yeah. Like it's just rock solid, right? And it's just like he's getting ready. So to, he can expand. He's, he's yeah. getting ready to just burst. That's how hard he is. And oh, <laughs> and I, I think it might have lasted a week. And I like I brought I like destroyed it and all like the beads came out of it and wherever oh, the really? fuck. Yeah. They're, wait, last wait they had beads inside the fucking I'm see I've never broke uh, one. No, the uh the uh, the stretch armstrong not to really start to get off of our Christmas thing, but uh <laughs> the stretch armstrong doll has like uh it's like a co- corn syrup type of like oh, but it's like yeah they use that for a lot yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just really stretchy. You put it in there it's just <laughs> it's weird. I, I busted that thing open too. I was a destructive wow. child. I think I think my my favorite like for, for Christmas my favorite gift that i got growing up was the ghostbusters firehouse i was oh, like four bro. or five years old if you remember that it was the ghostbusters firehouse you, and it had yeah. the pole where you could put the figure on yeah. it and it spun all the way it, down could you like dump the ooze on yes the yes yeah bro and, I and you know what i did that oh. one time and it, ru- it, it pretty much it, ruined it, the whole it, fucking it, thing it, my dad was so up. mad oh, yeah. for hours cleaning that fucking thing up yeah, like yeah it fucks it up especially because yeah, yeah. like if you forget about the ooze and it like hardens and it yeah. just sits there well i mean that's the thing like once you run out of zoo ooze like you know let's say if someone out there in the world still has that firehouse there's no more ooze to pour down that so at that point what are you pouring into that now like you know does someone just like shit no, like it, it, like put it this way somebody somebody breaks up with their boyfriend you know male female they get mad at their boyfriend you know whatever so they shit in the top of the ghostbusters firehouse could you imagine finding that just you know shit just flowing out of the top of the Ghostbusters firehouse. Like, and you're just kind of like, oh my God, why did you do this? Yeah, yeah that's fucking nasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <but laughs> like, def- I, I don't know. I'd have to question why I was in a relationship to, to, with them to begin with. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> Are we frozen? No, we're not frozen. No, it's oh, just the Facebook frozen. version of it. Oh. <laughs> but no, also... I have the distinct honor, right before you got here, my buddy Chris, who you guys have seen here on the program before, he just left out. He dropped me off a Santa suit so I can go over and visit his kids and a few of their friends for Christmas. So pretty much he gave he dropped off a suit. Unbeknownst, I'm going to go in there and just beat the shit out of some children and just be like, Jeez. you were bad this year, Johnny. Wham! And Are just punch you, him in the face. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> but, <laughs> you should, dude, they should play the Stone Cold like entry yeah, the yeah, glass yeah. breaking and you just come in and you start stunning them and shit. <laughs> and you rip off your beard and you yeah, just Yeah, yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Austin three sixteen says, "I just beat your little asses." <laughs> yeah, that would be funny as shit. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, Chris would actually probably get a kick out of it. Too. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he would. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. He would get a kick out of that. Yeah. So. Oh man. And Chris that's just me pulling your feet up. <laughs> a lot of people would get a kick out of it. And and the thing is, is I, I always I'm look at it that's like what this. You do. Is I feel like that someone who dresses up like Santa should also know how to do magic. Because could you imagine that? Like you, you, you go, you visit some of the kids and you know how to do magic, but what you can do is you can sit there and ask one of the kids, be like, Hey, come here. Do you want to be a volunteer? Kid comes up, you put him in the bag and he disappears. <laughs> he it's like, disappears. Then, whoo, just that, gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You put the be... bag over the kid and then the bag just, and then it's like that. It's like, see, if you're bad for the holidays, this is what happens. Santa will, yeah, yeah, Santa yeah. will send you to hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? 
what? Yeah, it's just... And then the Undertaker's like bell dings. Yeah. And... Dong. Like, what the... <laughs> Why? Why is this happening to me? Why did Santa do uh, this? <laughs> that was crazy. And you, you take a kid and you just, yeah. you want to know how Santa does it? You just start <laughs> stuffing him down a chimney and like beat him down in there. Well, I mean, that, that's the thing. Like, there, there's only one other time, no, two other times I ever dressed up like Santa, both times. Both times were for pro wrestling. One, I was gold thumb and I had my whole gold thumb garb on with just a Santa hat and a beard. And I threw like toys out during a toys for tots thing in uh in the crowd. And then I did just recently, I think it was like 2019. Um, I was doing something with one of the students at a free show and he won the title that we had for the students. And he kept on, you know, going, Hey, Chase Rawlings, Chase Rawlings, blah, blah, blah like bad mouth of me. So I came up, I, I came out of Santa and he did this whole thing where he was like, look, Santa, there's one thing I won and that's the warehouse wars title. He's like, and you're going to give it to me. And Santa's just like, well, you've been a bad boy. You know, I can't do that. Blah, blah. blah. And it's like, Santa, you're going to give it to me now or whatever. And then I forgot how it was, but there was something where somehow he got distracted. Oh no, my music hit. And he turned around with my music hit. And when he turned around, I took off like the whole beard and the thing. And he turned around, I hit him with the sack oh. full of toys. And then we had like a whole match from that. And that's what a, a lot, that's a pretty dope segment yeah, there. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know is that I got a really bad allergic reaction blood. I love him to death. He let me use his Santa suit, but I don't know where he had it packed or how long he had it packed there. But I ended up getting such a bad, like I, my legs broke out so bad from wearing that suit. I don't know if it was the material or Could what be the material. Like, I have uh, no idea. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is this happening? <laughs> but of course we're right here live on Facebook live. And of course also our YouTube, you get this extended content on our YouTube and right here exclusively on Facebook live. Make sure you join us in the live feed. We are going to be communicating with everybody throughout the night of course our special guest tonight is wendy stewart kaplan she will be joining us around seven o'clock and our special guest co-host comedian eric woodworth he will be coming through relatively shortly as well and of course next weekend actually is our actual christmas episode in which adult film star nova sky will be our very special guest Ooh. and comedian <laughs> ashley pontius We'll be guest co-hosting that one with us as well. So that should be pretty fun with that coming off of Christmas, the whole, you know, how everything went for the holidays and how everything went for us and how everything went for everybody else. So that should be pretty fucking fun. But now, I mean, dude, going back to the thing of the whole, like someone being a magician, a Santa magician. Yeah. Like, I mean, Santa's yeah. credentials just went up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, what well, that's the thing. Like, not only can you make a kid, like, put a sack over a kid and make him vanish, but, like, could you imagine if Santa could, like, if he was, like, a shape shifter? And, like, you know, that's the point. It's, like, Santa's there, and you know you're going to get some little bitch kid going, you're not the real Santa. It's, like, okay, you're right. And he unzips his skin, and Krampus is underneath his skin. Like, he literally just zips straight down. His skin suit falls off, and then Krampus just bites the child's head off. Yeah, I, I actually I showed a picture of uh, Krampus to my son, and oh, he was petrified. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I guess I guess I'm a bad father, but uh, no, I no, mean, I, I told him it's thing, not. Like, I didn't. I told him it wasn't real. It's yeah, just you know, yeah. Well, I mean that's part of it. Like if you have kids, you got to teach them how to not be a bitch. You got to scare them every so often. And, you know, make them be brave and you know face the world and you know. Yeah. All that kind of fun stuff, you know. You just can't sit there and you know not let them, you know. Just I mean, your your child beats the shit out Jeez. of you as it is. Oh, like does. I mean, that's the thing. They they abuse the shit out of you. And you know, we were talking a little bit before we went live that you know you, you brought your new Oculus with you. We were talking about it the last time you were here, and um, mm -hmm. you're like, it'd just be great if I just did the whole episode on the Oculus. But that's the thing. Like, I wonder since Facebook is doing a meta thing, you can if somebody's live, can you watch yes. the live feed on the Oculus? Uh, yes, probably. Um, okay, because I know Tommy Simbazo, he was talking about it the last time he was on, which yeah, that was right. Mr. Skin, and he was talking about mm -hmm. how they're doing the virtual comedy shows. Yeah, our, uh, my cousin gets on there. Okay, okay, his, uh, yeah, yeah. Sh shout out to Billy, of course. Billy yep. was with us for the um, he, the Friendsgiving yeah, episode. He actually he told me it saved his life because he, you know, because yeah. of uh, the surgery he had, so he just kind of sits around and yeah watches shit like that which is cool, <laughs> yeah because he can't really do like yeah, a lot because much. of 
what's going on but you know i know he said the podcast helps out you know he always watches listens to the podcast having an oculus that helps out you know mm -hmm. so i mean wh whatever you it's know. really cool yeah i mean you can do a lot of crazy shit on that stuff now. <laughs> and of course it's wow. funny matt matt should, matt gets here and you know when matt gets here i he's at my front door so i go to open the front door and i just i get punched in the face not not by matt I just I get punched in the I, face. I was gonna say, dude, I didn't, by, I didn't punch you, by, by the smell of the green. <laughs> just what, the radiating. green grass. Yeah. <laughs> it's winter. We're and not then, cutting grass. And then Matt's sitting there looking at me. He's like, hey, there's a fox outside. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, are you seeing shit or is it really a fucking fox? Like, I don't like I have no idea what's no, going on. It was on a right legit now. fox. I wasn't seeing shit. <laughs> and then you were also telling us that you were telling me this horror story on how the neighbors were telling you how the fox took a dog and just rolled out yeah they yeah. uh um your neighbors are of uh what is that latino descent yeah. and they were telling awesome me, also they, they had a they had like some sort of a party out back well, yeah. it was fucking awesome I, like oh man it, it, uh, those guys I wanted, had a yeah. party yeah um but yeah they were they were telling me that like some uh little dog i'm not sure but the fox got it and carried it off into the woods and they're like Whoa. telling me that i was like that's yeah that scary sucks. That's scary stuff yeah but see here's the thing it's like a little dog and it's like you know whose dog like where did they come I, from yeah like know. you know it's like if it was just like a random dog but also if that happens i wonder if that's on my ring camera somewhere i've been letting oh, the thing die lately but if it is i don't think i'll tell my wife about that because if she finds that on oh, the yeah. ring camera that will ruin her life like i'm talking about yeah. put her she will be bedridden for the rest of her life <laughs> Thinking about that fucking fox carrying <laughs> carrying away that dog. I shouldn't and, laugh. It's well, terrible. I mean, she she will go past an already flattened dead squirrel and be sad for the rest of the day because the and, like, squirrel was already it off dead. the road and like say a little prayer to it. Like, <laughs> Give it mouth to mouth, try to resuscitate the squirrel. Don't you yeah, die yeah, on yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see, I mean that's this a lot. shit's like flat as a yeah, freaking yeah. pancake. That, that, that's a lot different than what we would do because if we were doing it, I don't think we would get the the mount the squirrel mouth to mouth. We'd just be like, like just okay, squirrel. Well, oh, never mind. Yeah. This this one's a female. We can't, we can't uh, resuscitate this one. Uh, I wasn't sure where you're yeah. going with that little joke there, but I don't uh, know. No, I, I wouldn't yeah, like, yeah. I, I just drive by roadkill and sometimes I just run it over again. But Make sure it's uh, dead. I'm finishing it off. I, it's mercy. Yeah. I'm showing you mercy. Okay. Um, well, uh, but there is, you're supposed to call like a hotline, I think, and they come by and they pick it up. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa. So, yeah, they have like a dead squirrel. Okay, I like, thought they had a dead squirrel hotline. Because that, like, like that's that's just the, the dead yeah, squirrel hotline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> imagine <laughs> a prank calls. I'm looking for some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like, like you know what you really, you really fuck with people. And you have Chip and Dale rescue rangers answer the phones. Oh and shit! And it's just kind of like, oh man, the chipmunks are answering the phone for dead squirrels. Like, what the fuck? And it's just like, hello. This is Dale. <laughs> so rescue rangers. <laughs> yeah. Do we need to come and rescue these squirrels? That's what yeah. you know we need to do. So, but um, but, yeah, I, there oh, is man. somewhere in one of those uh, other states. I'm sure it's their uh, redneck brethren or whatever. <laughs> West Virginians. Um, yeah. I think they have like a hotline or whatever that you call. They'll scoop it up, and it's actually a business, and they'll like come. Really? And, like, I think they like cook the, the roadkill or some shit really like make it into food that's pretty insane i, I mean I, see, it can't I, I be like dead for like days type <laughs> shit but i didn't know that i never knew that that's that's crazy like well you can fact check it i have no idea if it's, if it's real <laughs> well, of course since we're back on facebook i'm sure they'll fact check the shit out of that <laughs> not that they're, the really, the, they're the probably not going to care but yeah. the roadkill <laughs> nah, whatever um but now, like, I mean, as I said, everybody, you know, this is our pre-show, you know, uh, wait, here's the thing. How, that, that's the thing. The prank calling of the squirrel hotline. Like you said, you know, they probably get a lot of nuts calls or whatever and all that. Oh, yeah. So, you know, um, what? Whatever. I'm not reviewing my activity. Facebook's already asking me, do you want to review your activity? Like, no, fuck you. Like, I'm tagging somebody in something. Yeah, you alone. take the tag. Leave me alone. I'll go back to fucking YouTube, you fucks. <laughs> but um, no, like, 
<laughs> could you imagine that like someone like not only do they have the hotline but they have like an email line and it's just like that one redneck guy and he has a spatula <laughs> and he's holding a picture of the squirrel and he's like i found this one down the road and it's just like the squirrel's head is just flattened the rest of its body is like regular size but it just has a flat head and he's just holding it and it's like I, can you I, help the speller <laughs> i see some crazy shit lately like like TikTok videos and all sorts of things, you could probably start your own channel. Oh, I'm sure. Like, yeah. with ro- like roadkill yeah, road that kill. you and you, up. and you know what? Here's the thing: something like that will get you a blue check mark. Yeah. On uh, on TikTok, like I was putting some of our content up there for a while. I just gave up. I'm like, fuck it. Even though we have like some celebrity guests that are well known or whatever, yeah, I was like, fuck it. It doesn't make sense because we're not doing something completely fucking obliviously stupid or something that you know is clearly a work there's so much shit on tiktok so what's you the look blue and check like, then the blue check is bad or is that good no the blue check is verified just oh, like verified. how on twitter and facebook right. and all that blue check means you're verified i mean you know, I don't, that's really i, you I don't know and, like you know. I, making a channel or something like a tiktok like making food out of roadkill <laughs> i'm sold man i want to see that i just yeah. want to, that's well, interesting i mean like that, you're the like martha stewart of roadkill <laughs> That's the thing. It's like someone's like, "Have you ever eaten deer? Have you ever eaten squirrel?" <laughs> like, I love me some squirrel. Like, you know, it's like, what? Like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Look at some fresh wait. tire marks. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you eat it right now you'll taste the rubber the dirt and the rubber like how you can't get any more authentic than that <laughs> have you one thing and speaking of tires one and this is completely random one thing that bothers me is you know you have kids so have you ever been to a playground where they have like mauled up tire fragment as like the mulch yeah and well, it's just kind of like what the fuck and like and, and you sit there and you think about it because you have that seal underneath there so are they mulling up just the residual i think just you know, the tire quick, yeah. or are they doing the whole tire in general I they're think just it's like just fuck the, these like, kids if one of them gets stabbed in a leg then that's the risk they're taking haha they got their tennis <laughs> shot yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn west virginia yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, picking, I'm picking on west virginia well imagine that your kids could be playing on tires that ran over like a number of squirrels like there could have been roadkill shit human like remains or whatever on those tires who i mean they're not going to sit there and power wash those fucking tires like that's just not the way it's going to work because i could imagine that's like not a very like super high paying job it's just like here you go dude (laughs) wash them off and throw them in the blenders like okay boss gotcha and then he just you know starts doing it and then well, the w- boss walks away he's just literally <laughs> chucking like tires that still have fresh root kill in the thing, slicing along with up. the roots well, one, one of my uh one of my friends he worked for the state mm. and he said they used to pick up uh deer carcasses on the highway and what they would do is they would just throw them in a tree shredder that's what it, they'd have a tree shredder that just shoot, whoa, brrr, and fucking you just see like the blood in the guts just shooting out of that fucker and i wonder if that's how the rubber tire mulch got started somebody was just fucking off at work and threw one of those fuckers in like a tree shredder and it's like this is just, and someone was like this is it this is where i make my redneck fortune <laughs> off of shredding these fucking tires down in the mulch that's, you know, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that's crazy and it, it it's yeah yeah that that sounds crazy it is. that's like <laughs> probably exactly how that happens like, yeah huh, light bulb <laughs> Billy Bob, go and get the trailer. We're going to throw this here tree shredder up on here. <laughs> and actually, Wendy, Wendy is in the room, so we're going to go ahead and admit her into our pre-show. And uh, then that way she can get set up. We can go ahead and talk about a little bit of bonus stuff with her right here on the pre-show. And, um, you know, but no, I mean, man, <laughs> that that's what it is. I think that's what it was. That, that's what somebody's redneck fortune was, was they, they figured out how to grind down the tires and now they're using them around the playground. And that's one of those where you sit there and you think, and it's like, why wasn't it me type things? Like, why, why wasn't I screwing off at work? And then I ended yeah. up throwing the tire into the shredder and it gets all shredded and grinded up. And then <laughs> next thing you know, all these children are playing on top of it, you know, at, at a playground. Like, you know. <laughs> I mean, and it's yeah. earth friendly. You yeah. Know? It's so, I, well, I mean, that's the thing. Right? That, it is earth you know, friendly. But guess. see, I, here's the thing with tires though i feel like you know like you see it every so often like a, a stupid parent will flick their cigarette down and the mulch will catch on fire and the mm-hmm. next thing you know johnny and samantha are playing on the playground next thing you know it's engulfed by fire just <laughs> all this fire around the playground the kids are like how did this happen because one parent threw a cigarette down but now that you have the tire element 
That's right. rubber. So uh, most of all, rubber burns, if anything, it'll probably just it, melt down. I, I don't but, know. I, I short story. I caught <laughs> a. Uh, it, well, I'm not even supposed to admit because to this day they don't really know that it was us. <laughs> but we lit a tire on fire in the, fire in the woods okay. that was out back in my grandmother's house. Yeah, and it was so bad, and the fires just kept going and going. So we had no choice but to just like ditch it, and so we had them like <laughs> call the fire department. And they had to put it out. So yeah, tires burn for a long time. Oh, dude, they do, they do. So they I would really imagine do. that uh, the rubber in the playgrounds would burn too. But well, I mean that's the thing. I don't think it would burn from a cigarette though. Like that, you need gasoline and some high powered stuff for that. Like you know. uh a playground is just as simple as flicking a cigarette down on the mulch. Like, have you ever went to the mall and like you go outside the mall and like the bushes and the mulch is on fire because you have, you know, some schmo that just flicked their cigarette into the mulch. And some, next thing you know, the bu- yeah, 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 the bushes and the, the, the mulch is on fire. You're just going, what? Why is this like, what? Like, I just, I just walked out of FYE. Why, why is this on Don't fire? Work. Hello. 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 Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. How are you? We're on our pre-show currently. Um, so we're just kind of chatting around and all that stuff. We're talking about how... Um, Cigarette you know, butts set things on fire. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was the show. I was getting all ready to give you my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, we're being joined by Wendy Stewart Kaplan. She's going to be our guest tonight once we uh, fire up the regular uh, audio version of the episode starting at seven o'clock. She's joining us a little bit early. And we were talking about how somebody probably discovered a redneck fortune that, you know, I've had friends where they've thrown deer carcasses into those tree shredders you see on the side of the road. You know, I was just kind of like somebody probably threw a tire in that and seen it get shredded up. And they're like, you know what? We're going to put this around the playground. This is what people can play on. I'm like, that's somebody's million redneck dollar million idea. dollar idea. But, they, but you know what? It worked. It worked yeah. in all the playgrounds. You know where else they're using it for? Mulch. Have yes. you seen yeah. that rubber? But let me just tell you all something. Don't buy it. Okay. I tried it. And when it, you really? get like a 95 degree day, it smells like burning tires. Smells like you've got like a riot going on. Really? Oh, oh that's crazy. Okay, well, thanks for that advice. <laughs> there you go. I'm here to give you tips. <laughs> and, uh, and Wendy, are you, are you uh, only able to do audio or can you do video as well? No, I'm all set for video. I, I, I have, I'm lit. I'm ready. Uh, so we're we doing video as well. Yeah, yeah. If I mean, want. if you want, it doesn't matter. It's just so some... I'm like a big personality out there <laughs> in the world. So I love video because when this thing comes up, then I can yeah, then I can share it and and all of that. You forget <laughs> I live in New York City. We're not a car culture here, so you all you people in the car culture listen to these audio podcasts. But yeah. in New York, it's like we need to have the vision. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing. Like this show, we got uh, this show kind of evolved. You know, a couple of years ago, I we did this as a TV show. So I I, I came into not knowing how to do a podcast, and I was like, I'm still gonna run it like the way I ran the TV show, and we're gonna do it as a podcast. And I'm used to that. And then you know, with the pro wrestling thing, that's why we do Facebook Live. Of course, we're live on Facebook right now. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm used to the live element. And, you know, I feel like, you know, it's like, Hey, once you're live, you know, you just, you got to just roll with the punches. That's it. It's like, okay, there's no stuff. Well, it's where I live though. That's my, I, I don't prep. I don't need to prep anything. I MC comedy shows. I did a big show last night. So if I'm on stage, guess what? I don't know what's <laughs> going to be thrown at me. So I yeah. got to go with it. Right. Just like yeah. we're going to do here. <laughs> exactly. and uh and, and wendy we, we appreciate you coming on of course you know elaine and jimmy she they got eileen, you hooked up with us. eileen yeah eileen and she, I, it always messes me up with the e and, and and you know they're awesome they've sent us so Love many them. yeah I'm always excited to talk to everybody and also uh, comedian eric woodworth he's going to be joining us shortly as well he's going to be coming in probably around like seven o'clock or so oh. um our good uh comedian friends um but no i mean how, how's everything going how, how are you getting ready for christmas and you know all that stuff you all set well, for- christmas has become a great big question mark here in new york city <laughs> because you know this is how it rolls here about a week and a half ago they said they were just going to kind of get ready for this omicron thing and yeah. when they tell you they're getting ready for it 
usually they found 10 cases, which with COVID multiplies in no time. Yeah. So good example, I was in a, a drag beauty pageant last night and the host who's really well known, Britta Felter from Dra RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Sick. So did some of the other people call in sick. And then today I looked to see like who was performing where and what club. And there were like lines through people's wow. names. Yeah, so it's happening here. So it's really hard to answer how we're going to get ready for Christmas. Me, I'm just going to continue to do my thing. You know, I'm emceeing in clubs. I write parodies, so I'm singing them. I've got Christmas parodies. And I'll just, I'll be like the Titanic boys. You know, it'll be like going down. I'm still going to be singing yeah. and right. performing and doing the whole thing. Laugh Finder, yes. <laughs> and, uh, of course, that's Eric Woolworth. He's coming in uh Shortly, he's going to be available with us uh, in a minute. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You just got to keep on rolling with the punches or whatever you're doing. That, that's right. what I did throughout this whole entire thing. And of course, you know, we have the transformers of viruses now, the Omicron, which sounds like a transformer of some kind. So I know, I know. I never know how to say it. Is it Omicron or Omicron? Yeah, I mean, that's the I thing. It's just All right. Yeah, I thought it was named after that B2K singer, Omarion, right? It's an Omarion. <laughs> There you That's go. That's why it sounded familiar. Uh, boys, I am not live. I am looking at a picture of myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, here, let me let me just real quick. I'm going to send you a uh, ask to start video thing and see if that helps start out. Start my video. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you have all the power there, don't you? Start my video. <laughs> yes. Oh, there you are. Now Hello. You're live. Yes. How are you? <laughs> all right. Oh, and good. Let's check Eric, everything. How you doing, man? We haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> You there? Oh, yes. In the bottom square, I'm Wendy. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Nice to meet you. I'm Eric. I'm. Hi, uh, Eric. Nice. I make nice jokes and stuff. You. You're a laugh finder. Are you going to find laughs for us today, Eric? <laughs> That's actually my other job. I'm here to be just regular, straightforward commentary, not a joke in sight. Uh, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> okay, maybe a couple. How nice yeah. to meet you, Wendy. Really great meeting you. Where? What part of the country are you people in? Uh, well, you go ahead, Eric. Uh, I live uh, probably about 45 minutes outside of Baltimore. Oh, okay. That's cool. Where John Waters is from. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're, we're actually, we're in Baltimore. So we are, yeah. So, and speaking of John Waters, I seen him uh, randomly one day. There's a, a deli called Eddie's Deli down in the city. And he was in there picking up a sandwich one day. And I was at work and I'm getting lunch and I'm sitting there and me, me and my coworker are looking at each other. We're like, who is that? <laughs> and we look and we walk outside and we're like, that was fucking John Waters. Like we, we, we walk out and we're like, God damn it, we could have got a picture. <laughs> like, damn it. <laughs> right. You can't miss him. I mean, there's nobody that looks like John Waters, you know, his real, yeah. that little yeah. thin mustache and everything. Yeah. yeah, just him and Hitler. Those are the only two. <laughs> Hitler had a different mustache, Mr. Laugh Man. John Waters is thin. The other guy's is thick. John Waters is really funny. The other yeah. guy was not funny. Yeah, yeah. How dare I mean, you? Uh, yeah, Hitler copied off of John Waters. How I mean, dude, whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, I, we say what you want about Hitler, but I mean, he got a lot of people to follow him. He had to have some jokes every once in a while in between all the screaming. I mean, there's clearly some charisma there. You know, to get people to go along with that, you gotta, you know, you don't just follow fucking Hannibal Lecter and stuff. Yeah, that guy had jokes. Yeah, had it's good some bits, sort of crazy I bet. charisma, but he had it. It was there. <laughs> I don't know if you call it charisma. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> but we don't want to go down that political hole with me, too. No, no, no we no. don't. No. Listen, I will take the strong stance, and I'll say this. And yes. for, I don't care what any of you guys say. I think Hitler was a bad guy. He was a All horrible, right? horrible guy. <laughs> I don't, I'll take whatever backlash there is from that. <laughs> Oh, yes. man. thank you, Eric, for contributing. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and of course, we're live right here on Facebook Live. We're still in our pre-game episode, our pre-game before our actual episode. And uh, shortly, we're going to be rolling right into our actual, the recording of our actual episode, which will air on all major podcast platforms. Make sure you follow us here on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube. We we air everywhere you can possibly find us. And of course, Eric, Tommy Simbazo, all of our good friends from the Laugh Finder podcast, they always hop in and uh, join us every week. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, as I said, it's crazy Christmas right around the corner, Santa Claus 
is coming. And have you all done your shopping? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, Matt. I'm done. Yeah. Matt has kids. I don't have kids. Eric has kids. Like, so me and my wife were just kind of like, let's just buy ourselves something. And let's not worry about gifts for each other. Wait, what is this something? What is this? Can you like give us like a little clue of what you think a woman wants? Well, I mean, that, that's the thing. Like last year and this year, we were just kind of like, well, will we rather put money into doing a vacation or yeah. will we rather put money into, you know, getting each other gifts? And then it's just the kind of thing that we don't really like. It, it, we have we bought each other so much and we have so much stuff it's kind of hard for us to buy each other stuff now like we're just kind of like okay you know let's just put money into next year's halloween trip and we'll do that you know and do that oh i have to hear about this do you especially i got married on halloween okay oh nice nice everybody came as members of a bridal party but nobody really (laughs) thought that was the theme no one really believed we were getting married so i didn't get any gifts (laughs) now you have to feel sorry for me but I wanted to hear why you take a trip around Halloween. Well, I, I grew up with Halloween. Halloween is my Christmas. I love Halloween. My wife knows that. I we, love it too. Yeah, we used to do big Halloween parties every year. And then, you know, COVID kind of happened and we were just kind of like, uh, parties are kind of filtering off. So my wife was like, why don't we just do a trip every year? We don't have kids. Let's do a trip. So this year was the first year we did it and we went to Salem. So we went to Salem. I knew you were going to say that. That was, I love it. Do you, yeah. This is like my favorite thing to talk about is Salem. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, real quick, what I'm going to do, we're going to roll right into our actual episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. Of course, we're right here oh. on Facebook Live. I'm joined back by Matt this week. Eric Woodworth is joining us as the special guest co-host. And we are here with yeah. Brendan Stewart Kaplan. And we, we were talking a little bit on our pre-show. If you were able to join us on our pre-show on Facebook uh, Live, about some of the trips I've been doing for Halloween. Wendy is very interested in that. And yeah, like Wendy pretty much like we we went to Salem and it was insane. Like I've been to places on Halloween when I was younger, where there were a lot of people downtown. There there were probably about like 5,000 people in the center. Oh yeah, I know about Salem because you know, that's where witches from all over the country come. They fly in from everywhere for Halloween in Salem. I mean, that is considered, you know, in the world of Wicca, a very sacred place. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Did you want a ghost tour when you were there, Ray? We didn't do a ghost tour, but we, we did we did go see a lot of the cool stuff that was down there. We did a couple of the attractions. Um, we went to the Witch Museum, all the Witch Museums. Lo- yeah, the Witch Museum's great. That's like really, really cool, well done, and really tells you about the history of Salem. And yeah. how it was, you know, about crazy people just following. We were talking before we even started airing about, you know, people following bad people, bad leaders. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happened in, in Salem. Yeah. It was contagious, you know, yeah. and that's how it turned into burning witches. Yeah. And it, it's crazy. While we were up there, we also went to a wand store. It was you called Why Not really Wands. <laughs> I think, you know, that's what happened. People... You know, until like TV came around, you didn't there wasn't a lot of entertainment. You know what I mean? It always had to be killing people was like everybody's favorite <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> yeah. So stonings were very popular. Yeah. yeah. Now we I just sit around and get me. stoned. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's fun. It's totally I mean, different. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's the thing. Wait, wait, so imagine, imagine being stoned to death. Like I couldn't imagine. Like no, we, we don't want to go there. That's so painful. My gosh, right? Yeah. Being hurt to death. How many rocks? I think I could take ten rocks before I get tapped out. No, 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 no. I don't How many think you could no, do? From the looks of you there, I think you could handle a few more. <laughs> I think I could. Touchdown on my side. I could. I was. I was actually in high school. I was voted most likely to be pelted with stones one day. So. <laughs> This is just a self-fulfilling prophecy. I finally done it. <laughs> no, the, no, the so like, all kidding aside, so yeah. you know that really old hotel on the triangle? It's Salem, you know, where the yeah. main area is. It's a triangle, right? Yeah. Well, already now we're dealing with things like vortexes. We're dealing with weird energies. That very old hotel there. We went to check in there and you know they they gave us they're like oh you're gonna love this room it's nice and big i walk into the room this is a true story i go to put my luggage down my daughter puts her luggage down my husband puts his down and i look at both of them i said we're not staying here my, <laughs> my daughter was like seven years old she says why no. aren't we staying here i said we're not staying in this room and i went down to the front desk and i get this wide-eyed girl i said i need to have my room changed she said that's a very nice room i said no it's not 
because I know somebody died there. <laughs> There's a guy that comes in the back. This is a true story and comes over, moves her away and says to her, I'm happy to accommodate you. I'm going to change you to another room. Come to the end of the desk. I go to the end of the desk. And he said to me, you felt it. Somebody killed themselves in there. He said, "Some we've had people like yourself oh, that come in and can, can feel. Yeah. Yeah. So that is my Salem story. That's Salem. It's fabulous yet creepy at the same yeah. time, right? Laugh guy, you know about that. <laughs> I mean, let, oh, the feeling. You know, it, I, I've never felt like uh, somebody killed themselves or anything like that. I, that's weird, but like, yeah. I mean, I've been places where I wish I was dead for sure. You know what I mean? Like, so you know, you're at like, uh, you know, you're at like the uh, 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 the farmers market, and you and you have to hold. <laughs> You have to hold your old lady's purse. Like that's a time when I usually think of it. <laughs> you're going to say something bad about like truffles or mushrooms. And like, no. the <laughs> where is he going with this? He doesn't like mushrooms. That's the only thing. Oh, no, no, no. I love so mushrooms. Like so I'm going to be your... having a nice tea of them tomorrow. Let me tell oh, you, really? settling down. To... <laughs> I'll bet. Is that part of your Christmas gear? Is that how yeah. It really makes the Christmas lights pop. Let me tell you. <laughs> some <Bozo> special, baby. <laughs> well, how do you? Okay, so how do you all think that uh, edibles measure up to mushrooms? This is a poll I'm taking right now. We'll start with you guys. Oh, well, there's no comparison to me. I mean, edibles. First of all, I don't really like the uh, the. I'm not a THC guy. Really, it's not my it's not my jam. It actually kind of makes me a little panicky, and I'm a chill exactly. bloke. Okay. Uh, but uh, mushrooms, man, <laughs> it's, it's a great way to waste six hours of your day. Let me tell you, <laughs> I okay. love it. I usually like to be out in nature when I do it. Uh, but tomorrow I'm going to go see Spider-Man on it. So I'm very oh. excited. I'm going to sit back into a chair. I will be in the movie. For, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Literally, even though no one ever cast you. Does no. It no, because you're not going to be the fat Spider-Man. I'll, yeah, I'll be like, oh, my God, Tobey Maguire's really lost it. Jesus, he looks terrible. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, well, if you're so, talking about... Uh, Edibles versus like, uh, yeah. What was the other one? Mushrooms. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't. Edibles versus. But have you done a lot, a lot of stuff there? You couldn't remember the beginning of what we were just talking. Yeah, about. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm actually <laughs> on right Matt, now. Matt, Matt, Matt came to my front door and I opened the front door and I got punched in the face by the smell of weed and I was like, "Well, Matt's here." <laughs> there you go, Matt. Matt's here. Okay, Matt, go tell well, us. Uh, my thing with shrooms, my experience with those, I've only done them a few times back when I was in like high school, maybe. Um, but edibles, I uh, recently just had a brownie. What was that? Like a month ago, I went to the Poconos mountains. Uh, where were I, you in the Poconos? I have a reason for asking what, what town were you in? Uh, what the hell is it called? I went to Wolf Lodge. So where? Oh, I love Wolf Lodge. Okay. I have a weekend place not far from there. Literally oh, like, uh, 45 minutes from Wolf Lodge. Oh, it's freaking awesome. Beautiful Wolf Lodge is great. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I took a brownie when I went there and I ate that like half of it, <laughs> it ruined me for the rest of the day. And I was going down slides and shit. Yeah, and water it's, slide. it's a, it's yeah, a yeah. long story. It's a water park. It's a really cool water park though. Yeah, but uh, Edibles. I love edibles, but like, I don't know. It's the same thing as like shrooms. I don't like how long they last. Right. Yeah. I like to get high and it lasts for maybe like an hour or two, maybe three, but <laughs> tripping on shrooms for like 13 14 hours straight now nah, i'm not oh, yeah, in a water park, there's nothing like it i'm sure <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure all the parents really appreciated you on the slide going down the lazy river the lazy water was dope <laughs> that was it for you right was that your favorite favorite feature at the water park yeah yeah, because I was stoned. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how to swim, so it didn't matter. I don't know how to swim anymore. My legs don't work. Why aren't my legs working? <laughs> Nothing was working, obviously. <laughs> now let me ask you: You showed up at a water park and you didn't have kids with you, right? Oh, I do have kids with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he, my God. He, 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 you kids. didn't mention the kids, okay? <laughs> oh no. What? As a parent of assuming of small kids, bless you for being higher than a kite when you take your kids on a family oh, outing. It's, it's awesome. That's <laughs> bless you. Most people wouldn't admit to that. Yeah. No, no, it's, no. 
Like, I just feel like I'm one of the kids, man. Like, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I get on their mentality level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Sure, they're like, what's wrong with dad? Oh, he's just being his usual self. <laughs> he right. literally won't stop playing Legos. He's been doing it for four hours. <laughs> We've been done. Totally we were. <laughs> Why is dad spending so much time in the lazy river? <laughs> we're going to go down one of the slides. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I am in a slide, bro. <laughs> Matt's in the foot of water and thinks he's drowning. Help! Help! No, that literally happened. <laughs> See, I, this is one of, one of our other episodes. I actually did go down one of the slides. And when I sat in one of the, the slides, it's like a tunnel, right? Uh, you've been there, right? So you've been down the yeah, slide. I know, I, know, I know what Wolf Lodge is, yeah. Right, you know how it's like there's like a small little current, right? In that, yes. in that. They had, that's how they keep it. You'll, that's how they keep you moving. Yeah. yeah. So I sat down in that shit and I started floating away <laughs> without my raft. And like I turned around, I was like trying to grasp, trying to so I wouldn't get sucked down the tube. And I was high as a kite. And the the God bless her, the, the yeah. lady that that runs the thing kind of yeah, yeah. noticed I was struggling. She was probably thinking, <laughs> why this is a pathetic why, story. <laughs> why does he look like he's drowning? I need to save him. So like she came and she like kind of pulled me up. And she sat on the raft. She said, now sit in the raft and cross your arms. I'm going to kick you off. And I was like, you're going to do what? You're going to so kick she, me off the side of this? So like what? She kicked me off. And I, man, I don't, I swear to God, it's like I went through a time portal, man. <laughs> I, don't even think, I don't even know if this is even real right now. So wait a minute. Let me, let me get this straight. She, she rescued you from drowning. Yes. And then she was just like, how dare you drown? Throws you back in water? That's how this is how she's is this the worst lifeguard in the world? <laughs> yes. well, wait a minute, let's talk about how many inches of water are we talking about? Actually? Probably about two inches. <laughs> oh my god. That doesn't even qualify to be rescued. You did not deserve to be saved, okay? I was really high, okay? I deserve to be saved, man. I had uh I had a I have a fun story about a lifeguard. So uh, I actually I, uh, a couple of years ago, I was doing a, a tour, a comedy tour for the uh, for the troops. And I was uh, I had an opportunity to go out to the Dead Sea one day when I was in Jordan. OK, so if you have never been to the if you ever been to the Dead Sea, it's crazy. Like it's yeah. so salty that like when you get up to your navel, right, you just immediately float. You can't even you can't touch the bottom anymore. It just makes you go to the top. And I thought it was really odd. Cause I looked over and there's a fucking lifeguard there. I was like, what the hell? What is this guy? What is exactly does this guy do all day? Right. <laughs> so I go up and ask him, I'm like, Hey, what, what, you must have the easiest job in the world. What are you, the Maytag repairman of uh, like lifeguards right now? Um, and he goes, no, no, no. You know, he was like, you have to understand. Sometimes people are so fat that when they get in the water, They'll float face down and they're too fat to flip themselves over. So you have to go paddle your way out there and just give them a little rolly like this and then slowly bring them back to show. Sure. But it also got me thinking this, right? Like, you know, the, you know, you have the Olympics, right? And, uh, you know, the, the Olympics, you guys are familiar and, uh, they do the swimming, right. And all the swimming yeah. events. Do you think like, Jordan swim team because they practice in the Dead Sea. They're like, this is this is fucking easy. Like we are, <laughs> like, we are so good. And they show up at the Olympic trials and they're like, oh god! <laughs> like there's the cockiest team in the whole world. Uh, no, because, know. You know, I've been, I've been to the Dead Sea. You asked. I I've been to the Dead Sea, and there's so much salt in there. You don't need to know how to swim. It yeah. just will keep you cannot drown except you made a good point if you can't flip over and you can't flip over you can't because once you're face down the amount of salt just keeps you there it will weigh you into that water yeah it's wild i also hey one last fun story of the dead sea i know we have a guest because this isn't about my story <laughs> so i was i was there with three other comedians uh Tommy Simbazo and I are floating out there and our friend Sean Gabbard, very, very funny comedian from DC. And uh, he's uh, he's in the water and he looks uncomfortable. I'm like, hey, bud, what's something wrong? Are you are you okay right now? And he, he goes, I'm not doing good right now. I was like, why? Or just, do you need to do you need to get out? He was like, this salt water is killing my hemorrhoids. And he has to literally violently run out of the Dead Sea oh, as it was God. chewing a hole through him like a xenomorph making a way through the chest. Oh, and uh, so 
we said that we 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 had experienced that story, and we had a show later that night at the base, right? So my friend uh, Tommy Simbaz, a regular guest and uh, guest host on the show, comes up. He tells that story in front of about six hundred military personnel at this show, <laughs> and Sean gets up. He goes, "I told you that in confidence, you son of a bitch." <laughs> so, so there's a whole bit Air Force base that knows about Sean's hemorrhoid problems in uh, in Jordan. So shout out. Sean Gabbert, man. I hope it all healed up. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, me, me too. Wow. I, that was a painful story that you told. I was thinking of that salt water. That's like pouring salt into an open wound, did it? Yeah. Literally, yeah. Oh, uh, poor and, guy. Uh, Wendy, when you were at the Dead Sea, was it when you were working on Fragile Beauty? Fragile Beauty is Ethiopia. Wrong country, wrong part <laughs> of the world. Not even close. No cigar hey, for you hey, today. Hey, I'm from Baltimore, okay? I have that <laughs> Baltimore education. So, so um, I was actually in Israel and in Eilat, you know, where uh, the Dead Sea is, and just there on vacation, and it was incredibly beautiful. I love the desert. I was also in the desert in Ethiopia. We made Fragile Beauty about three tribes in the southern Omo Valley. And uh, again, you're in desert. But there, there was no water like what he's describing, but there was no water period where we were. The local people, the tribal people there, this really blew me away. They've got like dry riverbeds. It seems the part of the year when those riverbeds get a little wet, the water goes in there and stays in there. They siphon the water out with like a straw. This is how these people live. That's how they get water. I know it's really, really mind blowing. You know, it is crazy. It's, it's crazy because it's, it's the a water desert. Down, but it's it. it's so damn interesting to you know <clears throat> to see that. But yeah, uh, you know, people, indigenous people, they got it all going on. They have everything figured out. You know, you and I would be sitting on our computers trying to figure out <laughs> yeah, how yeah. to, heck to get water out of a dry riverbed. <laughs> you see them there with a straw, and they've got a bucket next to them. I'm like, what the heck are they doing? There's no water here, and then you find out that there is. So it's really amazing. Yeah, I I will tell you one thing: traveling the world, nothing made me appreciate America more than when I returned from seeing the many other countries that like our poor people like listen this i'm not saying it's not hard to be a poor person in america it sucks okay don't get me wrong but it is not what it's like like if you if you ever go to like djibouti africa and see that level of poor or argentina level poor like i watch kids i was playing a rugby game down in argentina and i watched kids race for our socks after the after the game they're like yeah these are these are good these are good ass socks that you just played in we will we will take them like okay yeah that's that's a level of poverty i don't know i hope to never you know, know. <laughs> but you know what when you travel those parts of the world and i make films in those parts of the world that's a level of poverty that they do live with day in and day out mm -hmm. and it's like everything else it's it's terrible to us we look at it and we go how do people live like this but it's what they know and it's how they live so and I, like and, and you've traveled laugh guys so you know the the <laughs> slightest thing will make the kids happy what was so incredible the film that we did called fragile beauty in the tribal part of ethiopia i had these cheap cheap 50 cent earrings on those women as poor as they were they probably sold as many cows as they could to get gold gold in that culture gold in any culture is worth something but in that culture it's really it's everything it's like the most you sell your cows right when you get them having livestock makes you rich they looked at my 50 cent earrings and they wanted to trade their gold pierced earrings for for my cheap earrings wow. so you know what right it's all perspective so did you stuff, but you 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 bartered right and you got a cow out of the deal right <laughs> it's like i couldn't get a cow on the plane going home that was terrible psa <laughs> is horrible all uh this is actually my this is actually my comfort support cow i need to fly with him uh, <laughs> Just and my support cow level. will not travel in baggage <laughs> needs to be in first class with me because you can go to that room <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> stewardess. Could you could you put could you put some of my cat? Could you milk some of my cow into this coffee for me? I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I insist you to be that fresh. It's part of my emotional support. I must have fresh cows. Like, <laughs> do it now. <laughs> really? But you know what? It's like the thing you don't miss what you don't have. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing, like, true. you know, I'm sure those parts of the country, some of those places, they've probably never, ever seen an iPad or a cell phone. So when they see something like that, it's probably like they're like, they're so shocked. Honestly, here's what's so bizarre with this conversation that we're having. I mean, the tribal people I was with, they still wear traditional clothes. They do yeah. not dress like Westerners. They dress like they have for hundreds of years. Yeah. But what blew me away the chief in one of those very poor villages comes out with an iPhone. Really? Yes. And this is going to blow you away. But so many of the most remote places I've been to, they uh, we went through an industrial revolution. Okay. Yeah. So we've watched all that. They've never gone through it. They just have iPhones, cell phones, and things that we have that have just popped up in their societies now. And that's a real mind blower because there was never a chance to grow with the technology. You know, even here we say, oh my God, the technology is evolving so fast. Imagine if you're a person paying for things with cows, okay? And then you're microfinancing on your iPhone. That's what yeah. people do not see that is completely mind blowing. And I would say that is now everywhere in the world. Not everybody, but you know what? You can go into a remote village and there will be one person that has some form of technology. It, oh, comes, it continues to blow my mind. Yeah, and with the with a lot of the, like you've done stuff with a lot of the tribes and the tribes, they all, you know, I saw some of the photos. They all have like that traditional, you know, body paint and all that. Do, do they all do a lot of that in sequence? Like, can you tell officially what tribe is what, what tribe is what? Yes. And okay, that's a, a great question. I'm noticing, hold up your inked arms for me, please. <laughs> so, you know, here we do body inking, right? Yeah. They were doing it long before we ever were. And they use paint that they actually create themselves. They also have ways of oh, inking. Wow. But um, traditionally, they will paint themselves with its clay and other things they get from the ground to make the colors with. It's mind blowing. A lot of the hair has got an orange cast to it. It's made with butter and the red, you've seen the red clay in places yeah. of Africa. They mix it with butter, goes, goes into the hair. And yeah, they look that way all the time and every tribe has different color way. Like the Caro people have all those, you as you were describing the geometric, Geometric yeah. designs all over them. Whereas the Mercy people, their thing is the clay plates. Yeah, they've got piercings and they do have some markings, but the big thing is, you know, they've got the holes in their lips where they have like a six inch clay plate in it, which wow. is it's really incredible. It was so funny because the women, once they got to know me and trusted me, they would be flipping out the plates. <laughs> they wanted me to put it like in my mouth. And I kept pulling on my bottom lip to show them there was, you know, there was nowhere for it to go. They found that hilariously funny. So it's just awesome. my ticket, I would pretend I was trying to put the plate in there. And, and you know what? This happens to me in a lot of those type of places. I am the entertainment. Laughing guy, let me tell you something. The gift of laughter, and you know this, you can use it anywhere in the world. You don't need to speak the language. You don't need to be part of their culture. There's something about being a, a funny person that will get you entree into anywhere you want to go and what you and what you want to do oh it is true i listen so far, fart and dick jokes they are universally <laughs> adored, okay and i have never performed for actual aliens from outer space but i'm willing to bit but they, they'll they'll enjoy hearing about my odd sex life i'm yeah. sure of it, you know? i'm so sure it's very hot okay <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> hot now <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, right. I have a question for you. Where, um, tell me what you were doing that you got to travel, and I want to hear some of the places you've been to. Oh, okay. Well, I've I've been to I guess like thirteen countries overall. Uh, some of them I went to playing. I I played rugby for sixteen years, you so I got my head. Wow. I That's got my head kicked in. I have horrible CTE. It's probably why I'm funny now. What's and uh, I don't know what that stands for. When I don't oh, know that's a horrible like concussions over and over again. You know, like, a boxer, like yeah, yeah, or like football players. You know, I don't know. I'm undiagnosed. I don't want to fix it. And um, so then uh, I've traveled to, to like Argentina and Mexico and Canada doing that. And then uh, I've done two overseas tours to the Middle East. So I've been yeah, to Jordan. Please. That was for comedy. Uh, I did. Uh, I've been to Jordan, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi. Uh, then I've been to um, Djibouti, Africa. 
uh, Kenya. Um, I was, oh, and I, I've only been to some of those, those places. How do how are you received in Djibouti? I'm just curious. I'm a legend in Djibouti. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> you you to wear that T-shirt when you're on these shows. I'm a legend in Djibouti. Uh, I own one. Somebody else already thought of it. I did pick it up and I do rock it. And the wife does not believe it. But, you know, it's a nice story. I tell it quite often. I did almost uh, get human trafficked in Kenya because I thought it'd be fun to just go on a Kenyan adventure with me and a comedian, Patrick Melton. And uh, I it was kind of scary, but we got back. I was just like, it helps being like two, three hundred pound gents. But when I saw like 20 of them that was ready to carry me off like Gulliver's Travels. I was a little nervous. <laughs> so what made you knew you were in trouble? What happened? Did you like hire a local guy to take you around? We did nothing. We just went out. We went out un- we went into out. the into the shit. We were like, we just just drop us off in downtown Nairobi. We'll fit right in. And- <laughs> you, know how, you know how Ameri- many Americans have gone missing in downtown. I've been there. Yeah, I. Well, you're I, dumb. I went. Yeah. But then you do comedy. <laughs> am I? Hey, am I? I made it out. Well, we we befriended like, one guy. We, we, we befriended one guy who uh, wanted us to get in a car. We're like, nah, we're, we're cool with that. But when we got up for, we read like this empty bar and this empty bar turned into like a bar of like 40 people, but everybody was just looking at us. And we're like, and I was like, like, I think we need to get out of here. And then when we got up, everybody got up to file us. It was like, shit. <laughs> so uh, me and giant Patrick Melton barreled through uh, the crowd of them and then just kept walking up block to block. And then we finally found a taxi that was wasn't that wasn't looking at us and we were like take us to the airport and then maybe we got panhandled for an extra forty dollars but hey we made it back safely and had a great story out of it it is it is a great story i love hearing stories like that you didn't end up in the trunk of the car you didn't know getting beaten up by the mob you know well the worst part is like when they i always will think about my biggest fear is like when they abducted me right they were like oh this is this is famous comedian from america they were like give us your bank account and they're like what there's sixty dollars in here what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> like i was more worried that i was gonna waste their time ultimately if they did it because i wasn't a wealthy man at the time <laughs> did you try and tell them any jokes i did i uh and I, I, for it's, you it was a language barrier. It was a real problem. Uh, I did meet the, I will tell you the funniest thing about the guy we did meet in downtown Nairobi. So this was uh, during the Obama administration. He comes up to us. He goes, Hey, you know, you know how like that, you remember how it was a big thing of like Obama has to show his birth certificate. Like people oh, were birth, saying that, right? Thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Birth, yeah. Well, in Kenya, in Kenya, he was like, you know, Obama is from Kenya he is Kenyan. And I was just like, so they were, they were, they actually were like, no, he was born here. They like repped it. But it was like, for the right reason, he was like, no, he is the first Kenyan American president because he was born here. <laughs> and I, I just thought I was like, who would have knew there would be an Obama truther uh, here in Kenya? Like it was the popular thing there. And that was very funny to me. I, I enjoyed that. And then he leaned into me. He was like, and you know, Hillary Clinton. We don't like her. <laughs> and I, was like, I also thought that was very bizarre. And we're like, all right, cool, man. Very, very nice. <laughs> well, it was nice that you got to share a little bit of politics with the local people and you survived it, right? I did. I made it. You know what? I'll do it again. I'll do it again sometime. You know, I've, I, I've lived long enough. Let's get trafficked. Let's have yeah, fun. Really, really. <laughs> You know, why not go to a foreign country and let them stone you to death? You don't need to have it happen in Salem. Yeah, that now that's that that's actually in comedy we call that the highest form of bombing, right? That's like it's that's as hard as you get bomb is when you get stoned in the streets. There you go. <laughs> and uh, what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna get into our featured beers tonight. Of course, we're still being uh, average Joes with the Bud Light, but the Bud Light's all gone. We also had Maui Brewing Company, Big Swell. So Big Swell is also oh, wow. our featured beer tonight from Maui Brewing Company. And our Metallica Blackened Whiskey is gone. Yeah. So our featured wow. shot, since it is winter, is Jack Daniels Winter Jack Tennessee Ciders. Oh, that's actually quite delightful. I've had it before. A little sugary. You don't want too many of them, but one <laughs> yeah. or two in there really warms up the old insides. Right. Gonna I was going to say earlier. A bottle of whiskey on the show. I didn't get the note. 
Yeah, <laughs> our tradition of pouring our shots over the laptop continues. <laughs> uh, really good for your computer. <laughs> so here we go. Cheers. Yeah, Cheers. there we go. Yeah, for uh, for for cider, that's like an awfully like half ass shot. All right, so there we go. And Wendy, what we're going to do Woo! is we're going to get into our game segment real quick. Oh, my called- God, we're going to play a game? Yeah, we're going to play a game segment. Would you like so- to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> Start off with, um, let me find them real quick, with uh, with a game that we like to call Name Three. And this, you and Eric can both answer. And uh, so we're going to start off with this. Wendy, you go first. We're going to start off with Name Three Objects that you can use off the top of your mind to damage somebody's vehicle? A key. Okay. House key. Um, a mallet. Okay. Okay. And my car. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. Now, what about you? Three things that you could damage somebody's vehicle with. Crowbar, baseball bat, handheld saw. <laughs> okay. Nice. My, my... how quickly he rattled those off. Yes, yeah. Do you my... need more? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite oh my gosh, is bologna. that's hostility. Bologna. Just, I, I, bologna. I knew so yeah, if you stick bologna on somebody's car, it will pull the paint off of somebody's car. I didn't know so that. you could do like a shape. You could do like a shape of a penis and put it on somebody's car, let it sit, and then pull it off. Nice. And that'll be on there. So bologna paint, you can throw paint all over somebody's car. Mm-hmm. And the dreaded roll of quarters should take a whole roll of quarters in your hand and just fling it as hard as you can at the front of the car. So what do you say, Matt? What do you think? Well, probably a jackhammer. Oh, that's that's pretty. A, uh, that's pretty. Uh... A dead body. You know, you throw, always throw a freaking dead body at a car. Yeah. And uh. <laughs> What? What? It was a people's elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. Uh, let me take one of these out of the trunk. Time to fuck up another car again. <laughs> you psycho. All right. Now the next one is name three ways that you can get kicked out of a modeling competition. Oh. Three ways that you can get kicked out of a modeling competition. Am I first on this yep. one? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, showing up 10 pounds overweight. Oh, no. no. Okay. Um, <laughs> showing up dressed badly. Okay. All right. And showing up uh, with facial hair. <laughs> if you're a woman. Yeah. Now, so. now, Eric, what do you think? Three ways you would get kicked out of a modeling competition or two? Um, I, would, I would say uh, first, um, being me. That would probably be number one. That'd be the first one. Like, I we didn't we didn't hire this to come here. Uh, we believe in body positivity, and this is a bit we're not ready. There's there's stages, you understand. Uh, this is this is a bit much. Um, the uh, how else could you get kicked out? I mean, I could think of endless ways. Um, just ask them where. Uh, hey, where's the uh, the cocuterie board? Uh, I feel I could get you in trouble enough to get kicked out. And then, um, you know, uh, uh, blowing the, um, the cameraman and then realizing it, it was, he didn't even work there. Uh, those are probably the me. I, I, I'm just saying things I could get kicked out of. I'm not hey, saying anybody. Rest, that was like dude speak. <laughs> yeah. Like modeling competitions and the things I named were things that really could get you thrown out. <laughs> Well, well, I, are you I, saying I, all those would be acceptable? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to... <laughs> My, I would, I would you can't say... have any facial hair, but you can blow the camera. It's <laughs> <laughs> totally permissible. And guess what? You're probably going to come in like for a second or third, okay? <laughs> it reminds me of my favorite. Hey, it reminds me of my favorite joke. Tommy told me this one is a good street joke. It's like, a, hey, what's the worst part about getting a blow job from Willie Nelson? It's when he looks up and goes, I'm not Willie Nelson. <laughs> That's along the same lines as what you said. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. You're a lady and I'm, I'm being so rude. I apologize. Oh, no, it's okay. I know that that's your shtick. <laughs> I've accepted you for what you are. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Wendy, what we're going to do, we're going to move on to our next game, which is called Incoherent. So pretty much we're going to hold up a series of cards and they're going to be spelled out in drunken lingo. Okay. I had to put glasses on to see yeah. the cards. Okay. So can you see that? Okay. 
Try to sound that out. There's two hints on the back. So let me know if you need one of the hints. What do you think that that card says? I need a hint. Anaconda. <laughs> nope. I don't have this. You want me to say what I'm seeing? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? It, uh, yeah, it, sound it out. Sometimes when you sound it out, you kind of hear yourself mm -hmm. say it. Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Yes, yes. There you go. <laughs> the other, the oh, thank you. That's good. You have to sound it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, but did I lose points because I asked for help? No, no, no. You're okay. fine. You're am fine. Am I going to win something? Wait, I need to know if this is what my wild. My what am I winning? <laughs> You're going to win, Eric. Eric will be your prize. Wow. I have tickets. She goes to Eric for four. That's great. I'll sit in the front row. So Eric, I'll heck. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> oh, at this oh, point, on. you're. You're comped anyway. Don't let them. Don't let them take it a prize. <laughs> okay, and, uh, what's that? Here's the next one. What do you think that is? Oh, I, that was pretty easy. I need a clue. Jewel. <laughs> He's doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Eric just gave you a big hint. <laughs> I always find it's easy if you say it like e like you're e yeah. E yes. 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 And the other e hint was like Diet Coke, modified enough to make you think you're making a healthy decision. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. And this is your last one right here. Can you see that one? All right. Yeah. What do you think that says? But make it. But naked. Yes, yes. yes. And they were nice buns and free pajamas. So, but yes, naked. but naked. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to do. Did you say I won free pajamas on the show? <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. It says free pajamas on the back as a hint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what we're going to do is now we're going to do what do you mean? So, I'm going to show you a photo and you're going to meme that photo. So this is the photo for everybody listening at home. The photo is a bunch of images of Obama just laughing hysterically. What would you meme that photo as? Hillary's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say Matt, when he showed up to my front door, <laughs> just laughing hysterically from as high as he was. <laughs> what about you, Eric? <laughs> I'd say uh, live, laugh, love, and launch the drone strikes. <laughs> that would be, that wow. would be the, what I put. <laughs> I, I was going to say farted in the elevator and clean it on somebody else. But... <laughs> and of course, this is Ode to Humanity. Wendy, have you ever heard of the game Cards Against Humanity? No. Okay, I'm not so... a good game player. I do terrible <laughs> trivia and stuff like that. I'm the first to admit, but I'm having fun. So let's keep so, going. So be, be aware, Cards Against Humanity is probably the most vulgar of all the it, games. It, so it's pretty vulgar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read off the face card. And then you're going to get an option between one and five and you're gonna randomly answer that card. If you okay. don't like that answer, you get to pick a different number. So what we're gonna do is the first one is what is my secret power? So you're gonna randomly choose one through five on what my secret power could be. Three. Three, all right, so. Hey, can I choose a different number? We can go head to head here. You want to? Yeah, so you chose three, I'll choose five. Five, all right. Okay. Have you played this game before? No, I, I have played it before, but usually you read the it's played completely. It's it's a totally different game when you're in person. This okay. is this is the light version. <laughs> yeah. So for Wendy's card, my yeah, secret three. power. She picked three. Yeah, she picked three. So that that's that one right there. So my secret power for Wendy is suddenly feeling sad for 40 years. <laughs> and then Eric's card is blue smoke. Coming out of my anus. <laughs> Are you satisfied with that, or do one of you guys want to pick a different number? Three and five. I think Eric's is perfect for him. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with I'm sticking with my answer. Yeah. So Wendy, three and five are out. Do you want to choose another card? Yeah, let me see what two is. All right, two. So two. Two is how awesome I am. <laughs> I like that one. All right. All right. Cool. Wow. Cool. So there we go. And then we're going to do another round, which this one is. Yeah. And today's soup is cream of blank. So you're going to choose one through five. <laughs> one. 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 All right, Eric, what about you? I'm going to stick with five. I'm going to stick with five. five? All right. Five. 
All right. <laughs> so for Wendy's, and today's soup is cream of Nazis. <laughs> wow. For Eric, and today's soup is cream of the milkman. <laughs> oh. Well, let me just not- say the first answer, that's that just ain't that ain't right. Yeah. Let me tell you. Can I choose uh, another number? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. What number do you want? Oh, good. Let me let me try four. Nobody's picked four. number four on anything so far. All right, four. So <laughs> and today's soup is cream of Chinese people. <laughs> oh my. Now you are going in a bad area there, boys. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. We don't want to make any of those jokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eric, what about you? Were you good with yours or do you want to choose another number? Well, the milkman, no. I mean, I love it. I Let's do it. So Let's... the other the other two cards, you would have had cream. Oh, and today's geez. soup is cream of children alicious or oh. elderly Japanese men. <laughs> oh. Wow. I, okay, that's a real squid game, game answer. Game. That's tough. Really? There, there's, a, there's a bunch of messed up people like Eric. That sit around. Whoa! Like bars. <laughs> Eric, don't take that. Don't take it. Whoa! Come on, hey, I mean it's it. true, but hey, hey, <laughs> relax. <laughs> and uh, of course, that's our Otis Vanity segment. Wendy, thank you for being such a good sport with that. As I know, it, it kind of gets a little over the top. I think the game's over. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. That, just that's getting it. warmed up. As a matter of fact, I want to go back to the first one about injuring cars. I thought of something else. <laughs> well, I was playing that? this part of the game. Coca-Cola. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Especially if it's bottles in Mexico. Because that Coke is formulated differently. Yeah. It'll take the paint off of cars. This is true. I drink so much of that when you drunk in that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where, do they still got the Coke that actually has the real Coke in it? Like, yeah. No, no, yeah, no. no, you no know, Eric right? was in Africa. He can tell you the, Af- the Coke in Africa, the Coca-Cola there is amazing. It's real yeah. good. <laughs> real good. Primo. <laughs> And nice. uh, and, and Wendy, Kenya? of course, you you have a, you have she's the last model standing. What the, tell us about the last the, she's the last model standing? So we, are you asking me to talk about my book? Is that yeah, what you're yeah. asking me to do? Look, here's my book, and you'll notice the cover. I've chosen colors that go with Eric's shirt. Oh, thank <laughs> you. This is the great Macho Man Randy Savage. Thank <laughs> you so much. So my book is the story of my life of coming to New York in the late seventies and being a Studio 54 girl, and how I started my modeling career, my acting career, met celebrities, went on to start to make films about remote places in the world, and how no matter what happened to me, because every bad thing you could possibly could imagine, when you're working your way up that ladder of life, happened to me. It's all in this book. This would be a good book for you to read, Eric. I'll tell you why. It tells you how to make lemonade from lemons. Say what? Uh, first yeah. of all, A, <laughs> flattered you think I can read. And then number two, yes, I will try. <laughs> it's, wait, this is perfect. Look at the page it randomly opened up on. Thank God, picture. I am in a, in this page, I'm in a wet t-shirt contest. Oh, oh no, it's, all right. It's a low, we can't see it. It's a little low. <laughs> is it hey, don't. Now? Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was that film was by Troma Production. Do you boys all know Toxic Avenger? And any uh, of- do I, I know the Toxic Avenger? <laughs> right, you're Toxic Adventure, Eric. But I knew you would know Troma Productions. And yes, I did a bunch of their films to get started. So wait, you were in the you were in the Toxic Avenger? I wasn't in that film. I was in Waitress. I was in Squeeze Play and two oh. other films. Well, that's and great. I, I had small parts in those films, but when the films would open, they would send me all around the country to promote the films, and they would have me build as like the star of the movie, which totally wasn't true. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? I'm, I have three lines in the film. And the, and the producer, director, Lloyd Kaufman said, don't worry, we're going to have you out of town before the movie opens. And they did. So I would sit in these malls where the movie was going to be, and I would sign, autograph, the, autograph these pictures to all these like young kids that were aspiring to be actors like dear Susie I know you have a good career ahead of you I was such a liar (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, that's amazing. Well, I love, first of all, I love trauma films as a, as a film, as a movie connoisseur. Uh, I think Lloyd Kaufman deserves a lifetime achievement award for some of the things he's done, you know, for independent films over the years, not only producing such great stars as, uh, uh, I mean, the South Park guys got their start. Their first movie was through trauma, Corey Feldman, not to mention, um, uh, the great James Gunn, who's directed some of the, uh, recent, uh, Marvel Disney movies and the new Suicide Squad. So great, phenomenal uh, dude. And and of course, the great Wendy Kaplan got her start there. So what else can we even say? <laughs> what we can say is it's really Wendy Stewart. I did see Sorry. my God. I messed up. I messed <laughs> up. No, I have so many names. I know, Eric, do you ever go through this? You have so many names. No one knows what to call you. It's Wendy Stewart Kaplan, which I have on my book. So that, that people, I have three names. You know, some people have more than one name. Some people have two. I have three. So yeah, it gets very confusing. But well, I love trauma as well as you do. I think that they're great. And what, what a great place to get your t-shirt wet as a, <laughs> part of the pun as a as a trauma film but you know then I went on to you know get more modeling jobs become a, a major person at studio 54 now studio 54 was probably before all of your times am I correct oh but no we I know what studio 54 is but yes but before my it. time I was born in the 80s and so I, knew you um, so I never I'm not holding that against you like not even a little bit thanks Listen, you know trauma films, so you're okay. And you've read about <laughs> Studio 54. So that's all you need. I saw the wonderful movie. film with Ryan Felipe. I feel like I was basically there. I mean, yeah, okay. I'm sure it was just like that. <laughs> I didn't care for the film because it was not all that accurate for those of us who've been there. But, you know, I met Madonna before she was such a big deal at Studio 54. And the night she performed there, nobody knew who she was. And she did this really tired song that myself and my friends couldn't bear to listen to. It was called Borderline. And I'm like, this song has no energy. She ain't going nowhere. Well, we all know what the rest of that story was. <laughs> <laughs> the rest well, of the <laughs> and, you know, I met Andy Warhol. Now, I, even though you were born in the 80s, you know who Andy Warhol is, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. I just, it's, it, there's a test, you know, we have tests <laughs> in the show. You have to answer the question correctly. <laughs> yeah, he rocked a bowl cut harder than any man ever did, you I know? Like right. And painted soup cans, right? Yeah, I like it. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a failed artist myself. I went to art school, so I, I learned about Andy Warhol. And, uh, you know, I mean, he was like kind of the first rocks, modern rock star of art, if you will. He was okay, he was cool. Yeah, I'll give you, you know? that. He was cool rock star of art. I got to meet Andy Warhol, <laughs> who offered me a part in a film. But, you know, when you're in your 20s and somebody offers you something, you want to know how much you're getting paid, right? We've all been there. And Andy said to me, I'll pay you in a painting. And I thought, oh, no, I can't pay my rent with that. So uh, <laughs> stupid things. That so we you do turned down an Andy Warhol painting? <laughs> <laughs> and nice. here I am on your show to talk about it. That's right, guys. Nice. So, well, I mean, he, stupid you know, your painting and it's like eBay doesn't exist right now. I can't just put this as an Andy Warhol right. painting. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. Then this other guy, the next day, he tried to pay me in whatever this stuff was called, Microsoft stock. And I was just like, I can't pay my bills with this. I can't pay with Microsoft. <laughs> Bitcoin, what is that? How am I going to pay anything with Bitcoin? Yeah, stuff. you know what? We don't get any smarter. What What can I tell you? Yeah. But the, really, the real thing behind my book is I came to New York with $800 and big dreams. And I was a kid from the Bronx. And I really talk about how you have to follow your dreams no matter what happens. And the book is funny because as Eric knows as a comedian, what do we do as comedians? We take like the worst situation and we turn it around, we put a spin on it and it makes people laugh, right? Because everyone connects on that. They've all, all been there. That's what makes the, our tragedy, our tragedy when they're dying with us, they're laughing with us too. Oh uh, yeah, my all my traumas I've paraded in front of strangers for laughs. And it's, it's God, it's really, it's fun. It's a good time. Nobody even threw one stone at you yet. So we must be on a roll. <laughs> Part of the pod. Sorry about that. I like it. Well, usually they hear about all the things they're like, he's been, he's, he's been through enough. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it now going back to the whole tribe stuff, if you, if, yeah. if Americans were to have like tribes 
and paint themselves up. Like, of course, we have tattoos, but right. if we were to sit there and do like tribal paint, could you imagine how crazy, how crazy Americans would look? Because, you know, Dan, me and Eric are like putting the ultimate warrior face paint on and all that stuff. And we're, we're going to look like the ultimate warrior. Like, we're going to be like, yeah. Absolutely. We're all the yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> no, I have to tell you, if you're part of the club scene in New York, I yeah. see it all the time. Really? As a matter of fact, I don't even... I do great makeup, but I don't even try and compete with that because in, I'm telling you clubs in Brooklyn, clubs in New York, but especially the clubs in Brooklyn, like the kids that are like 25 on upward, it would blow your mind how they can paint. And they're not makeup artists. They're regular people that are expressing themselves through their art, so to speak. And it, it completely amazes me. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you'll see people walking around like that. Maybe not so much in Baltimore, but you definitely see that up here. <laughs> Baltimore, you just get a lot of junkies just slurped. Just oh, I know. Around like zombies. Hey, man. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Now, Baltimore, yeah. you get the whole, I just made eye contact with the crackhead at the gas station. And, and now I know he's going to ask me for, for money that I don't even have. Right. Hey, you want to know the trick to that though? A lot of times this is this is this is a pro tip. If you ever go <laughs> and you, you see the guy outside of the the 7-Eleven, you start scratching yourself like this and then you ask you have to ask him for a dollar first. And then <laughs> And then he's like, I bore you. Like, I just need like $2 to get on the bus. And then all of a sudden he's like, wait a minute. I, it, and I was going to ask you, I was like, man, we're in the same boat. Yeah, and then, yeah. then you hang out awesome. with him for a couple hours. You start, start feeding his dog. You learn his backstory. You find out the bridge he lives under. You have a great time. Okay. Did you get invited over to dinner under the bridge, Eric? As a matter of fact, I did. And we <laughs> enjoyed a can of beans together and some crystal meth. And guess what? <laughs> We're getting married in the fall. So <laughs> I'm excited. Can't wait to tell my wife I'm leaving her yeah, for I'm this sure homeless man under really the street. <laughs> I'm starting my new life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we were talking about painting body painting, face painting and all of that. Yeah, it's it's wow. big here in the club scene. It's big in fashion, you know? Yeah, I guess yeah. it's not big in Baltimore. You just go for your basic tattoos all up and down your arm, yeah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you want to... If you want to see wild face painting and stuff like that, you just got to go up to the Mount Vernon part of town. Uh, you'll see... <laughs> You say I used to do so. Mount Vernon is a uh, 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 part of Baltimore where it's like uh, it's like the gay district up there. And I started doing comedy up there at a place now called you Mads. Were the gay district. I'm just so curious. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it feels so good to be wanted. You know what I mean? Like I, you, I've been hit on by exactly three gay men, and each time I've been so flattered. I was just like, you know what? Bring it on. You just, if you just didn't have that huge hog, I'd totally fuck you. You know that? Uh, it's just, it's have, it, it's a weird thing, but you know, it feels nice to be wanted. But I used to invite my friends uh, to come see me start doing stand up comedy because they're excited and they're like, oh, and Eric's funny. I'm glad he's doing this, right? And they lose, they stop caring after about like two months and then you're on your own. But they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, Eric's doing his hobby again. Uh, we have jobs anyway. So like uh, we, I used to bring my uh, my very tough rugby friends up there to go do that. And we go to this place called Nads. And I, I would never tell them that this was a gay bar or anything like that. But yeah. Nads wasn't as gay, but it was attached to this turbo gay bar called the uh, called the Perp, called the Rhino. I believe it was attached to. Was yeah. Rhino? Yeah. Yeah. So I used to. I used to send him through. I was like, hey, I was like, hey, he was like, hey, this is a really nice spot. I was like, you know, it's really great. Right over here, there's a whole nother bar you can go into. You can go hang out. And I would constantly send my turbo straight, like probably homophobic at the time, friends over there. And they come back. <laughs> they were like, what the fuck did you just do? I was just like, what's wrong, man? He was like, I walked in and I was like, cool. There's a lot of dudes here. And then I looked at the TV and I saw that there was no sports. And then I looked over, ah, and there was, was a guy so kissing another guy. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, that's really weird, man. <laughs> and it would be fun to just see these tough rugby guys standing out front. And then like, you know, a couple of cross dressing, uh, uh, transgendered women walk by and go culture shock like this. And <laughs> well, you, know, Eric, now you, have, you have piqued my curiosity here because I want to hear what your set is like when you're, when you're at a game bar what do you what do you talk about on stage it's really not much different it's mostly just how excited i am of like it's mostly just saying i wish i was gay because this is great <laughs> you guys have 
so this is so fun. Well, I look I look like I'm I listen, I from what I've learned, I'm I am a gay guy's type. OK, <laughs> I know if I wanted to get laid, I just need to be gay. But <laughs> Do you know what category you would fit into there, Eric? You want me to uh, say I, I forget. There's it's 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 the word for whatever shaved bear is because I'm not hairy enough. Right. right. Otter. An bear. otter? Oh, an I otter bear? Yeah, otter. Unshaved otters are young, right? Mm -hmm. So it's unshaved, no hair, but you're still a bear. Oh, so okay. I, nice. I can tell you're a bear right through here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And, like uh, I said, I get uh, stop. I can't take all the compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Salem real quick. Of course, you, you posted some drag shows. I went to a drag show in Salem. Oh, you went in Salem? Yeah, it, there was a place called uh, Gula Gula's. And we went there and they did a drag show. And I had never seen one before. My wife asked. Mean? I was blown away. It was blown so, away. It was so awesome. And thinking of, brilliant, yeah, right. Like the way they do their makeup. And all yeah. that, like it's unreal. Like that, that was probably one of the funnest parts we had on Halloween night was going to, and, and it was funny because the bathrooms, it didn't say men or women, it said whatever. Neutral. Just Neutral. wash whatever. your hands. I like that. Yeah. Right. Whatever, just wash your hands. And I'm like, this is like that. It was so late. It's back. crazy. They just made a bathroom work like how it works in everybody's house. That's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> how do they even think of that? Yeah, that, that is funny. That's a good one. I like it. <laughs> It's just like the bathroom in your house. That's but that is nuts. Are, are the best. Did you have female impersonators at your drag show, like people that did Cher or or Mariah Carey? Those are big characters. No, so usually I'm doing the comedy show, but um, you know my one of the the show Laugh Finder that I'm on that says underneath my name uh, are get it, it's we play Dungeons and Dragons. There's a point to what you were saying, right? So like uh, with it. But uh, my uh, but but our our game master is a uh, is a fella named Dorian Gray, but he also uh, uh, moonlights and is a famous, pretty famous comedian. He's been on Showtime and stuff like that as Violet Gray. Um, so he is uh, he's a little bit of a gender bender. Um, and I call her I call him when he's he he's he and when she's she he's she she and uh, it, uh, now a funny story about all this right is Dorian is first of all or Violet. Violet Gray is a 10 out of 10 comic. Uh, it's very, very funny. But uh, when when I was overseas, my friend Tommy, who's also on the show with me, right? We, he would go and we'd talk to them. We'd have to do these military tours where we talk to the base people and like they want to know about our lives. I'm like, we're not, listen, we're not fucking famous. Sorry. We just got a bunch of money to perform for you. Like I, we're not, we're really not important. Right. But he used to say, Hey, Tommy would always go. He's like, Hey, you got a, you got a wife back home. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And these are my kids. And he's like, and they, just, they, when they'd ask him, he's like, Hey, you got a girl back home? He's like, matter of fact, I do. And he'd pull up a picture of Violet gray and he'd show it to like these officers. He was just like, he's like, yeah, that's my girl back home. He's like, I just can't wait to get back home and suck her dick again. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it crushed oh, every wow. single whole time. It, hey, it crushed in the military crowd every single time. We were so excited to come back home and tell Dorian about it. Uh, <laughs> what was Dorian's reaction? Dorian is the most even keeled person you'll ever meet in your entire life and will also quietly debate you on any topic until the, the you just you will never don't ever debate him. He he like reads and stuff. And we're not <laughs> we're not smart people, but if yeah. you ever have a chance, look up Violet Gray. She's all over the internet. Very, very Hilarious. I'm totally gonna pull that up. I'm dying to know no more about Violet Gray now. Oh, yeah. I am so happy I came on this show today because you all turned me on to a drag person that I didn't even know about. And I know all of them. So there you go. And when oh, yeah. you, we thank you for being on the show. We're going to let you go ahead and get ready to get out of here. Where can everybody listening at home and watching at home, where can they find you? Okay, here come the handles. Are you ready? More handles in a dresser. So <laughs> you can go to my YouTube where you can see tons of my work, which is Wendy Stewart TV. My show Pandemic Cooking with Wendy is on there. My um, 
two podcasts. I have Triversity Talk, which is my LGBTQ podcast. And of course, my entertainment podcast, which streams live every Wednesday from Pangea. And that podcast is called If These Walls Could Talk. I have people on celebrities, musicians. I can even have Eric on the show. So he has to like reach out to me because <laughs> I put on funny people too. And you're kind of funny. Okay, let me- continue. Oh, thanks. <laughs> It's funny. Um, and then, of course, there's my regular Facebook, which is Wendy Stewart. You can read about my films on my Facebook as well, which is Visual Journeys, Our Stories. Of course, there's my Instagram account, which is She's the Last Model Standing, just like my book. And speaking of my book, you can find it on Amazon, both the hard copy, hard copy, Eric, and the Kindle version. And are you gonna do an are you gonna do an audiobook version where you maybe read you know, it? Okay, have to ask me. My biggest problem is there are not enough hours in the day for all every single thing that I'm I'm doing. I'm meeting <laughs> myself coming around corners. And maybe we do a GoFundMe and we get the great Morgan Freeman to read it. <laughs> you know? I love Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Actor. I remember oh. when I was at Studio 54 and, I, <laughs> and Andy Warhol offered me a painting and I said, fuck off, you weird hair dude freak. <laughs> I'm going to tell about it. Oh, my God. My Twitter account, which is uh, she's the last model standing and Wendy Stewart. Somehow I ended up with two Twitter accounts. I don't know. How, how does that happen? Do any of us know? We don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Wendy, once again, thank you for being on. Of course, we will be right here live on Facebook Live next Sunday for our post Christmas episode. We will be live with uh, Nova Sky. She's an adult film star and also fellow friend Ashley Pontius, local comedian. She will be guest co hosting with us next week as well. And uh, oh, I love Ashley. She's my dearest friend. This is so great. And this airs on where else can we see this show? Can I see this show? Um, right now, this is on Facebook Live, so this will officially go on Facebook Live, and it will stay there. It will be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Yeah. And then a couple a couple of days from now, we're going to take the audio, and this will be available on every major podcast platform out there, Spotify, iHeart, wherever you find your podcast, mm -hmm. the audio version will be trimmed down into that. And when do you how do I get a how do I get a copy on vinyl? Because that's actually how I consume most of my media. <laughs> We, we need to figure out how to make vinyl first. <laughs> hey, wait, can I ask you boys to look into my camera and say cheese? Cheese. cheese. That's my favorite thing. I always like to take <laughs> pictures on the computer. Oh, but you all look so cute. Oh, look at you. You're all cute. I love this. <laughs> that was great. I and had the best time. Wendy, real quick before we go, can you just do a quick plug for us and say this is Wendy Kaplan and you're listening to the Happy Hour podcast? Hi, everybody. This is Wendy Stewart Kaplan, and I'm listening to the Happy Hour podcast. Awesome. Thank you. And Wendy, what we'll do, uh, shoot me your address. We like to shoot out t-shirts to all of our guests as a thank you. Yes. So, extra well, large. I like extra large so I can sleep in them. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, we're, we're kind of backed up with some of the guest shirts, but we're going to try to get it out as soon as possible. So because we, we have guests every week. So, but um, yeah, you Wendy. Thank you. Bye -bye. We appreciate it. Anytime, let us know. We'll uh, we'll promote whatever you want. You guys are the best. Thank right. you. Thanks, Wendy. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. All right, bye. All right. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, leaving. Hit the button. Yes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's now she's still stuck. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, you know, is that your is that your basement finish behind you? Yeah. As a matter of fact, you're looking at my wall of movies back here and stuff like that. Oh, this is my. This is my giant 12-inch uh, Ash from the Evil Dead action oh, figure that's signed by the man, Bruce Campbell himself. So I, there you go. All I types of fun Chucky stuff. Back behind you, too, which oh, I actually I blew through the first seven episodes of the new Chucky show over the last two days. Oh, dude, it's great. I like it. Like, I like the direction that they're going. Yeah, like, I, Tommy was telling me about it. I haven't, I haven't dug into it yet. It's been on my, uh, it's been on to my to watch list though yeah, for sure. It, it's, it's good. I like it, and uh, you should, you should try to uh, have Wendy on a uh, quality time. She'd probably be good to talk about some of the trauma films. 
and all that. Yeah, that should be a good guest sometime. I shot her a little friend wreck, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if we can oh. hook that up. You what? know, I'm just so lazy at getting <laughs> guests. I got to be honest with you. Half the time when I get all the show prep done and everything, I'm like, oh, who needs a fucking guest? Most of my guests are people who are like, hey, can I be on the show? Like, yeah, what day do you want to be on? Just tell me. We're open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, man, as I said, I appreciate it. We, yeah. we, we love you, Tommy, Ashley, everybody you know, from your crew, you Stop. know, we, we always Stop. love having you guys on. We're going to try to as much as we can get you guys on in 2022. Cause it, it you know, it's fun. We're friends. We're still, I'm still trying to work on the wife to come to the new year's Eve thing, because I want to go see you guys do the murder mystery and get drunk off my ass. And or, I'll tell you what, or, or at the very least, if you don't want to go all out, come this weekend, we're at McGooby's on uh Saturday night this okay. week, we're doing the murder on 34th street. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty good one. We just did the first uh, run of the first two ones. We did two back-to-back shows at the bright box last week. So we got it under our belts. Now we're fucking ready. We're like a fine tuned machine. <laughs> so I'm excited. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go hop on this. Uh, I got a virtual show that I just literally booked a second ago. So I'm going to go right. throw on my VR headset and go make some jokes in a minute here. Awesome. All right, man. Appreciate it. We will right. be in touch. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you again. Thanks, Eric. All right. Right on. Catch All you right. later, fellas. All right. See you. For everybody watching at home, this is going to conclude our Facebook Live slash YouTube episode. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. You know, all the support you give us, make sure you hit that subscribe button down at the bottom on the corner right here on YouTube and make sure you shoot us a follow right here on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever we're everywhere. Hell Just yeah. look up. If you can't find us, there's a lot of happy hour podcast oriented podcasts out there. www.dhhpod.com. Everything's there. Thanks, guys. We will see you right here on Facebook Live next Sunday with Nova Sky and Ashley Pontius. See you guys later. In for all. In the meeting. In the meeting. It won't end. Never. Oh, my God. Oh, what, what, what is uh, it? Microsoft. Error.